you're studying period four for AP World History and you need to know what to study for Key Concept 4.3. So I got you. Let's do this. I'm Amanda and this is High Level History and I'm giving you content so that you can really kill it on your AP World History exam. So go ahead and subscribe to be notified when I post new videos to help you pass the exam and hit the like button if you appreciate this content, it's helpful for you. So just so you know, I'm starting some AP World History review parties and we're going to be working online to figure out everything we need to know to pass this exam and I'm going to help you get those fours and fives that you're dreaming of. So if you want to know more about that, click the link below and find out more about the review parties. So for right now, I'm jumping into Key Concept 4.3. So this is all about land empires and how and maritime empires and how they maintained power and how they expanded. So we're going to really go into politics here. So let's do this. All right, key concept 4.3, this is land and sea empires. So this is really all about power. I'm going to get into who had it, how did they keep it, and what kind of conflicts happened as a result of those tensions that formed. So keep in mind that, stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm really going to highlight three key terms that you absolutely need to know if you're going to really do well on this key concept. So let's go. So in terms of maintaining power, like how does a group of people who are already in power keep their power? How do they convince others that they belong in power? Right? There's a couple ways that happens. Um, it could happen through the arts. It could happen, you know, like through architecture. This this is actually a point of synthesis. Even this happens throughout history. You know, they build the pyramids because they want to show that they're in power. Or right? if you can build something big, something great, people will respect you. So that is one way they do it. Also through religion. If you're governing a group of people who believe in a god or believe in a certain belief system, and then you position yourself as chosen by that god, as, as the chosen person for that belief system, well then people are going to believe that you should be in power, that you deserve that, you have the right to be in power. And that is something we're going to see in Europe. Um, and then, you know, or like something like human sacrifice with the Aztecs as a point of how do you maintain power and use religion to assert that power? Another way that people maintain their power is through bureaucracy. So like the exam system in China, which of course existed before, but it, you know, exists in this time period as well. And we're really going to start to see, you know, different ways that the bureaucracy allowed one group to be the powerful group, whether it was because of education, you know, passing an exam or birth order, whatever. So, you know, here's a picture of the Taj Mahal built in this time period. I mean, look at that thing, right? Like if you can build that thing, people are going to respect you. And that is a huge, that's, that's, that's like a constant throughout history, right? Build big and people will respect you. Um, or, you know, Aztecs human sacrifice. Um, this is just another way that we, that, you know, we see people maintaining their power. So who was actually in power, right? We kind of looked at how they stayed in power, but who are these people? So we've got two different groups. We have land empires, and that's, that literally just means empires that covered large portions of land. And the major players in this time period are the Manchus, which are in China, the Mughals in India, the Ottomans in like the Middle East, and then the Russians in Russia. So, and then you have maritime empires who are covering across the seas, right? They are sort of the explorers, the expansionists. And this is clearly, you know, the Europeans that are doing that. The Portuguese, the Spanish, the Dutch, the French, the British. So, you know, shout out to Freeman Pedia for having this map because it is just like an awesome visualization of the land and maritime empires of the time period, right? So you can clearly see like Russia is giant look at the red space there you know in the americas you've got like the spanish you know you can see where they're coming at and their spanish are also in west africa um you know you can see like the portuguese covering that like band of like south africa as well as brazil and then portugal and then over as well in indonesia so you know this is kind of a good map and you know it might be worth it for you to just pause it and to just make sure that you know where these people were located. You don't have to memorize all the like modern day countries or anything, but having a good sense of who is where. 
Um, and then in the next period, you know, look at all the like white space, right? So the space that is that is not currently taken over by one of these powers, those spaces become crucial in the next time period because it becomes a race to capture those lands, right? They become this like free territory in, you know, in essence. So competing for power. So, you know, you saw that map and it's not like all those people just walked on in and had it. They competed and sometimes they're competing over trade routes like the Ottoman and Europe in Europe powers, European powers. Uh, in some cases there's more of these like state rivalries that kind of existed for a while like the 30 years war or Ottoman versus Safavid. And then in in other cases you see local resistance. Just because it's some a, a group is in power doesn't mean everyone's happy about it. Right. And so people revolt. The samurai revolt. Peasant uprisings were, you know, happen across across the world. And, you know, like, for example, here's the Thirty Years War kind of looks like something straight out of Game of Thrones. I mean, you just have people competing over these like deeply seated rivalries that had existed, um, whether they were based on religion or, you know, a past culture, history, you know, whatever. This is the result of that. So this is basically all a period, for, you know, key concept 4.3. There's, you know, a lot to know, but in general, I would say to really focus on, um, and actually they're not highlighted in this, but your three key terms to really focus on, I'm going to choose for you, are divine right. Know what divine right is. It's in Europe. It's a big part of how they maintain, how the monarchs there maintained their power. So really know what that meant, divine right. Second, i um, just going to choose one of these empires. I would say learn about the Mughals, right? So if you know about the Mughals, that's India. That's a massive power, land empire. And maybe even choose one maritime, like the Portuguese. So know the Mughals and the Portuguese. Um, I could definitely see a question that's asking you to compare land and maritime empires. And then finally, in terms of competing for power, um, why don't you go ahead and choose the 30-year war as a really good example of, you know, a state rivalry that exists in this time period and something that you should really know about. So if you really focus on those, actually give you four. Divine right, Mughals and Portuguese empires, and 30 years war. That's a really good overview of key concept 4.3. So if you feel like there's another key term that is more important than one of those four, drop it in the comments below so that we can, you know, focus on it and help each other really focus on what's the most important aspect of this key concept. And if there's a term that you don't know, also drop that in the comments and we're going to help each other out so that we can do as best we can on this exam. So I will see you in either period three or period five, whichever version that you're going to next. Maybe you're going backwards or forwards, um, but keep going, keep studying, keep reviewing, uh, and good luck on the exam. This is High Level History and I'm Amanda Doermerl. If you're an AP World student, tell me how it's going in the comments below. And for more AP World content and review, be sure to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at High Love History.